Friends, welcome to Emmanuel United Church. And as I light this Christ candle, I am reminded, and you at home, I hope that you are reminded that Christ is still the light of the world, and his light shines in each one of us, and is a beacon of hope in times such as these. Greetings from Emmanuel United Church in North Bay. Greetings from John, Lorne, and myself as we bring you worship from our sanctuary on this fifth Sunday of Lent. We welcome you wherever you are, whether in person, as some of us are gathered here in person, through social media, or maybe you're in North Bay, maybe you're in Toronto, maybe you're further away. We welcome you. Here at Emmanuel, we embody or strive to embody God's caring, God's welcome, spiritual nurture, and above all, sharing God's love revealed in Jesus Christ. I invite you to take a few moments just to center and to breathe as John and I prepare to share the words of Psalm 130. Out of the depths, yes, I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. voice. Let, Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of wrongdoing, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I will put my hope. I wait for the Lord, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love. John, how are you doing? How are you doing? Um, it's been, what, two weeks of social distancing, staying at home, flattening the curve. How are you doing? Well, thanks, for Ronnie, and uh, thanks for asking. It, uh, I must say it's a, it's a challenge. It's a, we have to adapt to a new normal, so to speak. Um, Elizabeth, Elizabeth and I are both doing well. Uh, we. Uh, it's good to be home and uh, sort of reconnecting with one another because I have more time, we have more time together now, a lot more time than what we have in the past. Um, so it's good in that regard and it's good to, we have time to get stuff done around the house, which there, there are lots of little jobs to do around the house. And we get out every day getting exercise, walking the dog and so forth. Um, I do miss uh, my daily routine of get, getting out and I miss my work at the flower shop and getting out and meeting people and getting out in the community and uh, I miss uh, our church community not being here, I miss the choir and weekly choir practice and so it's very different in that regard, very challenging but uh, as I say it, it's, it's only temporary and uh, well you know we, we have to have faith that you know someday it's all going to get back to, it will, when we come out of it, it it'll, no doubt, it'll be a changed world in many ways, but. Uh, These are interesting times. I have to say that um, for me, the novelty of working from home is worn out. However, I am grateful that I still have work to do. I have been phoning people. I've been preparing worship. I even did a home visit by social distancing this week, and I'll tell you more about that. I miss meeting with people in the way that we normally do. I miss Timmy's at two, I miss Bible study, and I too am grieving routine, and I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that by following these directives, um, we will all be healthier, and we will come out of this in, in a different place, yes. in a good place. 
Today's gospel reminds me that Jesus meets us as we experience all kinds of loss. And out of death, Jesus calls us into life. I want to thank you for your food calls, your prayers, and your expressions of care. Your support in this challenging time sustains me as I do ministry in this new way. Your ongoing financial support helps us to feel hopeful here in Emmanuel. Many of you have placed your envelopes in the mail slot on the parking lot side. Um, PAW is also a great option. And now we have a Donate Now tab, a button on our website, Courtesy Canada Helps, by which uh, you can easily make a contribution to Emmanuel by credit card, by PayPal, or by debit. So we thank you. We thank you for, for your faithfulness, and we are grateful for signs of new life all around us. It is helping us to feel optimistic during this strange time. Friends, I invite you at home to join with John and I as we pray, as we open our worship with prayer. God of promise and hope, we come to you, and some of us are feeling dried up, maybe a bit depressed. Share your vision of new life with us, that we might have hope for the future. Bring us up from the grave, that we might live as people of promise, trusting in the bright new tomorrow, the new life that you offer us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. John and I will offer a prayer before the Gospel reading. We will pray responsibly. Listen to the Word of God, for God's Word is life. But death runs swift. Believe in the promise of the resurrection. We want to believe. Help our unbelief. Lord Jesus, in the midst of our despair, you are calling life out of death, for you are the resurrection and the life. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> our scripture reading is taken from John chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. The, the raising of the dead, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merrily to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. 
Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go, also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. While Mary stayed at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. She said to him, Yes. Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. When she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, Come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Christ. <clears throat> come and pray in us, Holy Spirit. Come and be with us. Come and convict, convert, consecrate until we are wholly yours. Help us to hear what you are saying to us. Amen. Friends, 
as we lead worship here at Emmanuel, I can hear the rain falling, coming down outside. I can hear it on our roof. And I'm choosing to believe that the sun will shine again. I must admit that two weeks into COVID-19, I have been snacking more. I miss my routine. And I'm not only flattening the curve, I may be flattening the curve. I miss going to the gym. I miss seeing you. I've had more than a generous helping of chocolate and ice cream and chips in the last week. And I've indulged in a little emotional eating. And the enemy situational depression can use a sense of loss in my life to make me feel that God is distant. If I give in, if I keep focusing inward, then I am unable to consider other perspectives and my pain becomes the most important thing. And so I invite you to mentally underscore other perspectives because there are other perspectives. Now there are in, now there are in life significant times when pain is acute, such as when a loved one dies. Lazarus is dead after a short bout of illness. Anyone who has grieved knows that emotional grief, it hurts. It is actual pain. It is physical and psychological pain. It is all consuming and it wears you out. Grief is exhausting. We can assume that Mary and Martha are devastated by their loss. Deep in grief, we wonder, is there life beyond endings? Jesus' delayed arrival feels like neglect. Their reaction is understandable. The current situation is that Lazarus is dead. He was the head of their home, the breadwinner, a beloved brother, and Jesus had the power. He had the power to stop this death had he been there on time. Mary and Martha both say to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here sooner, our brother would not have died. They are honest about their disappointment in Jesus. They are refreshingly honest about their disappointment in Jesus. The text does not tell us why Jesus was delayed. We are told that there are threats on his life in Judea. I have a hard time accepting that Jesus intentionally delayed his arrival so that he could resurrect Lazarus from the dead. It seems cruel and manipulative to put Mary and Martha through such grief for the sake of raising Lazarus from the dead. It doesn't seem consistent with the compassionate Jesus that I know. It seems more consistent with Jesus' character that Jesus might have been actively engaged in ministry where he was, perhaps helping people. Some suggest that it might have been a day's travel on foot before Jesus even learns of Lazarus' death. And Jesus is delayed two more days. It is possible that Lazarus is already dead by the time Jesus receives the news of his illness. We also know that the disciples are reluctant to go back to Bethany because threats against Jesus were now on the rise. Bethany, the town where Mary and Martha lived, was just outside Jerusalem. So between an active ministry schedule and the concern of his disciples for their safety and Jesus' safety, it is conceivable that Jesus is genuinely delayed. One day for the news to get there, two days before he leaves, and another day for travel. Lazarus is already dead and buried for four days by the time Jesus arrives. Mary and Martha are deep in mourning at this time. They are raw from their grief. In the immediacy 
of this devastating loss. And a community of support has formed around them. Many of us know what that kind of loss feels like. Jesus shows up for Martha and Mary at a very painful point in their grieving. To underscore an important point, Jesus shows up for Martha and Mary at a very important point in their grieving. Friends, the good news is it is possible to experience grief, to have tears streaming down our cheeks, to feel the depth of pain, and still trust in the mystery of hope. Martha's faith is a good example for us. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give whatever you ask of him. Even wearing a veil of tears, Martha still chooses to believe. She may not understand, but she chooses to believe that God still has the power to perform signs and wonder and life. She still holds, she still holds out the possibility of another perspective. Martha still chooses to believe that Jesus is God's Messiah and God will act through Jesus. She trusts in the mystery of faith. Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Jesus offers another perspective. The new life Jesus speaks of is not some future event, not some end time event, but one that we can claim in our current time of suffering, our current time of waiting. Martha experiences this extraordinary sign of new life, chooses to still believe, May the compassionate one help us to open our hearts to signs of joy and new life, even at times such as these. I don't know for sure how this time of suffering is impacting you or for how long it might extend. I do know by faith that Jesus shows up for us in our time of grieving. He meets us in these difficult times and he reveals a new perspective. Friends, emissions are down. People are kinder and governments can act quickly when needed. Spring has arrived early. God is with us calling life out of endings, out of sadness, helping us to feel joy. Babies are still being born in this world. We are emerging as a more caring society. More people are smiling and checking on each other. Jesus is offering us, through us, a fresh perspective as he calls life out of what feels like pain, out of what feels like an end. Jesus works through you and I, our friends, our neighbors, and by the grace of God, I am going to get through this time, and you will get through this time. We lament that we had to cancel the community brunch and that we are unable to open Emmanuel's food bank. I sense God is calling forth new life when we can still individually contribute to agencies in our community that have the capacity to serve food and hot meals to the most vulnerable in our society during this COVID-19 pandemic. Like Mary and Martha, we can name our pain and not feel judged for it. And we can have the assurance that Jesus is with us, calling life out of pain. This story of Lazarus rising from the dead prepares us for the cross and for a fresh perspective, the resurrection. God who is with us in our pain is calling forth new life. God offers us fresh perspective. I received permission to share this illustrative story with you.
Friday afternoon, the God of life was present as I sat six feet away from a member of our congregation whose husband is palliative. In her driveway, on two lawn chairs, we were having a pastoral visit while practicing social distancing. The sunshine warmed our bodies and our hearts and our spirits as we shared life. The sounds of nature were God's ways of providing fresh perspective. We heard the bird cheerfully singing and we recalled God's faithfulness. We considered that we were transitioning into spring and we remember that God is with us in the changing of seasons. I left sensing that this person had a solid faith and would be just fine. She would be okay. Her husband will likely die in the next few weeks and she will indeed grieve. And she claims the new life, the perspective of a resurrection faith. Friends, Jesus calls us out of death into life. Thanks be to God. Our pastoral prayer this morning is taken from Celebrate God's Presence and it is found on page 158 to 159. I invite you at home to pray with me. O Jesus, who wept at the tomb of Lazarus, be with all who grieve. O Jesus, who wept over the state of Jerusalem, be with our cities, our rural communities, and the people around the globe that are leading us through this COVID-19 pandemic. And be also, O oh God, with those that suffer. O Jesus, who wept alone in Gethsemane, be with all who feel alone at this time. God, it is a particularly difficult time for those who live alone, who rely on social services, who are feeling isolated. And we pray especially for those who are in quarantine, those who are sick with COVID-19, for medical staff, for our government, and for those that are leading in helping us to take precautionary steps, and for researchers who are actively working to find a cure. Oh Jesus who wept, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Be with all who feel forsaken, all for whom the world seems to be uncaring and indifferent. Jesus who offers our prayers with loud cries and tears, hear our prayers. We name those on our hearts this day. and you know our requests. O oh, Jesus who wept in sympathy and frustration, O oh, living God who knows all our pain and joy, be with us in our lives and lead us into life. We pray in Jesus' name and as Jesus taught us, we say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we travel on this Lenten journey, we know that God leads us and guides us. As we travel on this Lenten journey, as we look toward Palm Sunday, we are attentive to claims of Jesus calling forth life out of death. As we travel on this Lenten journey, we work with God to restore God's shalom. So be it. 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.